The service layer pattern is another domain logic pattern from Martin Fowler's Patterns of Enterprise Architecture. And what this pattern talks about is you wrap all of your domain logic into services. And what do I mean by a service? It's basically just a class that retrieves the domain logic that you need. So we're just encapsulating business logic. And one of the reasons you'd want to do this is because that service layer, all those service classes, it defines the operations for your clients, your applications. So you could have multiple applications. You could have a UI, a desktop UI application. You could have a web application. And they could all share the same service layer. And then you're not duplicating that business logic. So it's really all about separation of concerns. You don't want your UI layer to have business logic inside of it. Because if it does, you're not going to be able to use that logic in other applications. So you define your service layer. It's completely separate from all your UI stuff. And then all your applications can share and use those services. It's extremely reusable. It's more maintainable, you could argue. Most importantly, you're not duplicating code. What are we waiting for? Let's do a demonstration of the service layer. So we're going to be doing the same domain that I've been doing in my other videos for the series. And we're going to be doing a library. So we have three different types of media that can be in a library. A book, a magazine, and a movie, which is denoted by these types. And you're able to check out these library entries. So the domain logic that we're wrapping or the business logic that we're using is that books can be checked out for 28 days, magazines for 14 days, and movies for 7 days. So that's our domain, and before we get started I want to show you guys some classes that I've already made. We have a model for our media, which just has the ID, the name, and the media type of the media, along with a due date, and is checked out, which is basically if it has a due date, then it is checked out. If it doesn't have a due date, it's not checked out yet. So that's our model. We also have a gateway object here, which basically just talks to the database so we can get a media by ID, and then we can also insert a checkout. And that's just, it's basically just a helper class that we're going to be using for this demonstration. So now that we have that, let's actually make this service layer happen. And looking at our application here, what we want to do is we want to ask a user for a media ID and then we want to check out media based on that ID. So that kind of sounds like a service we might need. We're probably going to need something, uh, some kind of service to check out media. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Let's create a new folder called services. It's going to have all of our services inside of it. A lot of times with .NET applications, your service layer is actually in an entirely different project. And then you can reference that project for multiple applications. But for this demonstration, we're just going to have it locally within the same project. So we have our services. We're going to create a new folder called checkout media services. And that's going to have all of our checkout media or it's just going to have our service to check out media. I'm putting it in its own folder though in case we have more than one, which we'll talk about later. Let's create that checkout media service. And make that public. And what we really want to do is we want to have a method here. It's going to return boolean, so true or false for success. And we're just going to, want to call this method checkout media. And it's going to take that media ID that we talked about. So now we have that. Let's make a little success flag here. Set it to false. Return it. And then we'll do all the stuff in between. So what I want to do here is I want to use our gateway, first of all. So let me just make a little field for that. And I just want to use this gateway to find a media based on the ID that the user provides. 
or that this method receives in the parameter. We're just going to call this media. Alright, so if the media is not checked out, not checked out, then we're going to perform the checkout. And what we're going to do for that is we're going to use our gateway again to insert a checkout. The media ID is the ID in the parameter of the method. But then we have this due date. And that's the second parameter of this method is the due date. And we're going to have to calculate that due date. And we talked about it, so a book can be 28 days, all that stuff. But that's some domain logic. And for that logic, I feel like we should wrap that in another service. And then this checkout media service can use that service to get the amount of days that each media can be checked out. So we're going to make another class for our service layer. So I'm going to put it in its own folder. And we're going to call this max checkout days services. It's the name of the folder. And we're going to create a new item here and just call it max checkout day service. I'm actually going to call it static max checkout day service. And what I mean by static is that we're just going to be hard coding all those amount of days that a certain media can be checked out. So let's create that. And what does this service need to do? Well, it needs a method. It's going to return the int for the amount of days. We're just going to call it get max checkout days. And it's also going to take the media type, since each type, or since the type is what really decides how long a certain type of media should be checked out for. And then for this, we're just going to run a switch statement on the type. And then this is just going to have our domain logic inside of it. So if it's a book, return 28. If it's a magazine, we'll return 14. And if it's a movie, we'll return 7. And I also just have a default in here where we'll return, I guess, 0. You might do this differently. And I mean, you might throw an exception if the type is wrong, but I mean, we shouldn't have that problem. Okay. So that's our max checkout day service. And what we want to do is we're going to use that service in here. So let's create that service. Static max checkout day service. Max, we'll call it max checkout day service. And it's just going to equal a new instance. Alright, so now we're going to use the service. And we're going to get the max checkout days from the max checkout days service. And we're going to pass it the type of the media that we found from our gateway. Whoops. Get max checkout days. So now using the max checkout days, we're going to make the due date. And that's just going to be date time dot now, and we're going to add the max checkout days, and that is what our due date is going to be for our gateway. And then we can also su success to true. Okay, so now we have our services complete. We have this checkout media service, and now let's use it. So let's set, let's create a new checkout media service. import that and now down here where we check out the media what we're going to do is we're going to say check out media service check out media and we're going to use the media ID that we get from the user let's actually wrap this in an if, if statement so if it's if it's successful 
then we're gonna write out to the console success otherwise we'll write failed to check out all right so let's run this and oops let's run this and test out our service layer basically So enter the ID of the media you should check out. Let's do two. And we get a success. Let's also do three. Oh, that was fast. Okay, we get two successes. So let's close that out and let's take a look at our database of checkouts. And today is the 22nd of November. Our movie was checked out for seven days and our magazine was checked out for 14 days. So we have our domain logic is all accurate our services are working and we can reuse all of these services across multiple applications but what if I wanted to get the max checkout days from a different service what we should really be doing here is we should be depending on an interface so that we can pass in a different service to get the max checkout days from some other class so I actually want to do that real quick. So we have our static max checkout days service. Let's extract an interface. Call this the i max checkout days service. We'll create that. And now let's go back to our checkout media service. And instead of just hard coding the static max checkout days service, let's do an i max checkout days service instead. And instead of defining it here going to actually pass it through, to cons through the constructor. So now let's go back to our program and we're going to create that max checkout day service up here. And it's just going to be the same static max checkout day service and we'll pass that through the constructor. So as you can see here Maybe we want to get max checkout days from a REST API or something. Then we would easily just swap out this class that implements this interface. And we'd be doing it right off the bat. And that's what I love about the service layer pattern. Everything is very modular, broken up into services. And it's easy to just swap things around like that. And you could even do the same thing for your checkout media service. You could extract this into an interface. And then maybe you don't want to use a gateway that accesses the database. Maybe you want to make a post request whenever you check out media. So the service layer is great. And I really think it's a necessity for any kind of big enterprise application architecture. If you're making a big project, you should probably look into having a solid service layer with all your business logic. So that's going to do it all for the service layer pattern. Again, encapsulate your business logic into a service layer, makes everything more reusable, and multiple clients can all use that service layer. Thank you guys for watching. Be sure to leave a like or subscribe. Thank you.